Hi, this is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of December 11th, 2023. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.10 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the project's page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we explain while calling for honesty from others, how the ADN is being less than honest about its own motives. Second, as their efforts ramp up, we look at what those pushing for increased K through 12 spending are leaving out of their discussion. And third, we look at a new study that provides some significant insights into the role played by the PFD in small business capital formation. And now, let's join Michael. Weekly top three. Uh, let's get into it. Here we go. Um, hit me with the big stuff. And first and foremost, this is some honesty out of the Binkley family. <laughs> <laughs> what a wow. setup. I know. I just, I'm only here to help. I just I just lob them across the plate. You smash them out of the park. Go. So the ADN editorial board, uh, what we what I've sometimes called on the show the Binkley family blog, uh, has an editorial this week that, that has the uh, has the headline: "Let's be honest about what's going on with snow removal." And basically, basically, what the Binkley family <laughs> blog is doing is is they're gonna is they're starting to run through a list of everything they think Alaskans don't like, and then they're blaming it on the PFD. <laughs> so this week, you know, it, up to now, it's been mostly K through 12. You don't like, you don't like, you know, K through 12 results. We need more funding. Uh, blame it on the PFD. We need to cut the PFD more in order to increase K through 12 spending. Uh, spending. But now they've sort of got, got it in their mind that, hey, Alaskans don't like what's going on with snow removal. You know, in Anchorage, we don't like what's going on with snow removal. The, the peninsula's had issues. The valley's likely had issues uh, with, with snow removal. So guess what? Let's blame, let's blame that on the PFD too. Yeah. And so this whole, let's be honest about what's going on with snow removal is we can't have good snow removal, just like we can't have good K through 12. We can't have good snow removal because we've been cutting the budget to pay the PFD. If it wasn't the damn P, if it wasn't for the damn PFD, we would have clean streets. We would have we would have trucks out there. You know, the the okay. second after the snow hits, they're rushing be it away. There'd be unicorns and puppies and butterflies if we just didn't have that damn PFD, right? Exactly right. And so, you know, that's that's going to be their. That looks like it's going to be their mode from now on. Let's let's poll what Alaskans like least or what La Alaskans hate most. And let's blame it on the PFD. Let's write an op-ed that says that, that says it's the PFD's fault. Here's the here's the truth. The honesty that the Binkleys don't want you to know, though, is is people aren't pushing back on on PFD cuts because they they hate snow removal. They they want to they want to you know uh, 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 cut snow removal. People are put at least me are pushing back on PFD cuts because they have the largest adverse impact on the overall Alaska economy of the fiscal tools available, of the revenue tools, of tools available. They have the largest adverse impact on the overall Alaska economy and, and are the most costly, according to ICER, by far to 80% of Alaska families. Other revenue tools are much better. 
the problem or the, the, the honest truth the Binkleys don't want to focus on is they would have to pay for it. They would have to contribute, they non-residents of the oil companies would have to contribute to the costs of snow removal if we used better, less adverse fiscal tools. And so what they're trying to do is keep you focused on the PFD, keep you focused on you can't have snow removal, you can't have good schools, you probably can't have Christmas uh, because of the because of the PFD, um, and and keep you focused on that rather than focus on rather than focus on what's really going on, which is we need more revenue to do these things. How would how's what's the best way to raise the revenue? Oh my gosh, it would it would tax us. It would tax the Binkleys. Uh, to 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 pay for it, so you know we can't have that. So let's keep the focus on on the PFD. Basically, basically what the Binkleys want to do is create a state where they get everything they want. They get K through twelve funding, full funding. They get snow removal. They get you know broadband to every place in the state, paid for by uh, paid for by the state or contributed by the state, so they can everybody can access the ADN online and access all those great ads online. Basically, they want everything they want, but they don't want to pay for it. They want right. mid, middle, and lower, middle and lower income families to pay for it. And so every time you see these op-eds, oh, we, we can't have K through 12. Johnny can't learn because of the PFD. We can't have snow removal because of the PFD. Hey, you we know what? Broadband because of the PFD. You know why Santa Claus doesn't show up? Because you're getting your PFD. That's right. You don't need Santa Claus. No, none for you, baby. It's all the PFD. But they want all that. They want all that. They want K through 12, full funding K through 12. They want defined benefits. It's like Kathy Giesel or, or, or Natasha von Imhoff or Click Bishop. They want all that fully funded by the state, but they don't want to contribute to the costs. So right. let's blame it all on the PFD oh, and try because, to keep people focused on the PFD. Because the PFD is corrupting. I mean, come on, you guys will just buy booze with it or go on vacations or do hookers and blow or something with all that money. I mean, it's going to, it couldn't possibly be used for anything good. I mean, that's, that's why you just need to shut up and let us have it because we know better than you how to spend that money. Yeah, exactly right. As opposed to, as opposed to the, you know, the marginal revenue, the marginal income that the Binkleys are using to, you know, fund their vacations in Hawaii or fund their vacations in Mexico or, or fund their purchases of, of, of hockey teams. I mean, that's what they're using in, instead of contributing to the, to the costs of Alaska government, like everybody else, the Binkleys, when they, when they're able to push all the costs off on the PFD, they have, you know, free income that otherwise they would have to use to, to pay for the cost of government. They've shifted that to somebody else. Right. So what are they using their free income for? Well, they're using it for trips to Hawaii and trips to trips to to to, uh, to Mexico and and you know various expenditures that are good because it's theirs, as as opposed to the expenditures of the marginal PFD income that middle and lower income Alaska families would would get, which is what pay for groceries, <laughs> pay for a snow machine, pay for some you know for something that would that would benefit their lives. The Binkleys want it all to benefit their like lives. A little gasoline, maybe a little heating fuel, maybe some tires for the car, you know. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it, the whole thing is just now we're talking proportionally. Their, uh, their fair share is what Brad's talking about tonight because everybody's losing the PFD. But when you look at it as a portion of the income, holy cow. And especially the portion of the income that would go further to actually stimulate the economy in the form of things like, you know, entrepreneurship and job creation and some of these other things, all that other money is, no, oh, it's just going to the state. They'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. It's, uh, I yeah. mean, it, it's ultimately frustrating for sure. Well, it is. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating when, when the bank try to cloak themselves in the mantle of honesty, right? We're honest. We're going to tell you what's really going on. And you're really not getting snow removal because of the PFD, or you're really not getting snow, snow removal because of the K, K. You're really not getting K through 12 because of the PFD. You're really not getting broadband because of the PFD. I mean, just name it, name whatever shows up in the polls as the thing Alaska's hate most, and you're not getting it because of the PFD. It's all the PFD's fault. And that's, that's not honest. You're not getting it because the state doesn't have enough revenues and to, to, to pay for all that stuff. And rather than confront the fact, rather than confront the fact of what's the best way to raise revenues and then do Alaskans want to participate 
in raising revenues that way. Rather than go down that road, they just want to say, that's the PFD. It's always well, the PFD. And they always try and make it a single issue. It's always the PFD. It has nothing to do with low employment numbers. It has nothing to do with a long-term lack of a long-term plan. I mean, this this equipment, in the, story, in the article, they talk about how, uh, you know, we're not nearly as well equipped as we were 10, 15 years ago. And every, that's a 10 and 15 year problem. I mean, Dunleavy's only been here for four, five years now. Uh, that's not just an instant problem. This stuff has been breaking and falling apart and not being replaced for years. And they're spending money on what? Uh, you know, they have, a, they, again, they're not dealing with the historically low employment numbers that we're having right now. People, I went to Safeway the other day to pick something up and at six o'clock, they, I mean, by 5.30, they had closed down the deli and the meat counter with signs up there saying, sorry, due to staffing problems, we can't stay open. I mean, this is not just a DOT problem or state problem or a teacher problem or whatever. There's a lot of factors here. And to distill it down to the PFD is disingenuous at best and outright, let's be honest, dishonest to, at worst. It is. And, and it's just, I mean, we're, we're going to see this. We're going to see this through the entire session. We're seeing it in the buildup to the session. We're seeing it. We're going to see it through the entire session. The op-ed, the ADN op-ed page is going to blame every damn thing that they can on the PFD in an effort to cut the PFD because they don't want to pay for funding it themselves. They want to push the costs off on middle and lower income Alaska families. They want to use the tool that has, they don't care that we're using the tool that has the largest Im adverse impact on the overall economy. It doesn't affect their economy. They get more money out of it. They have the state funding all these things that, that benefit them. You want papers delivered? Ooh, let's, let's make sure the roads are cleared. Um, uh, you, want, you want online access? You want online access to all those ads we run? Ooh, let's make sure there's broadband out there. <laughs> They're getting all those things they want. They're trying to get all those things they want free to them. By, right. by forcing middle and lower income Alaska families to pay for it. And that's the honest truth, not, not this, let's be, you know, let's be honest about snow removal. It's the PFD. The honest truth is they want a fully funded everything for free state they, that they don't have to pay for. That's the thing. I mean, this is really the, this is like politics of the lowest common denominator where there are so many I I issues. I mean, this is like the problem with Twitter when it was only, I don't know, whatever it was, you know, hundred characters or whatever you're trying to distill, de distill down a, a complex problem into a single soundbite or into a single issue. And it's not just a single issue. It's not just a single thing, but they're going to make it about it. They're going to leverage that to the maximum advantage of everything they can do. Like I just talked about the low employment numbers and there, I mean, all this other kind of stuff. None of that matters. What matters is, oh, well, this is because you were greedy enough to take that PFD. And if you weren't greedy enough to take that PFD, we could all have what we want. <laughs> and, and. Under, for, for the Binkley family, we could have it for free. I mean, we could right, we could have right. all what we want. We wouldn't have to contribute to it. We everything would be great, uh, and and we could you know we could just keep all that money in our lives and not have to not have to contribute to the cost of any of it. Because you've done such a great job with every. I mean, here's the thing, Donna just nails it. She says, "I guarantee poor government outcomes will remain when your PFDs are gone." I mean, because government has done such a great job with all the money that we've given to them thus far. All we need is to give them more. M O A R. More. We need more money. If we just had it all, we could take. Don't you? You don't worry about it. We could take care of it. I mean, that, that's what it comes down to, right? I mean, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole point. Yep. And that's, and that's what they want to make it. I mean, that they see a pot of, you know, a, a billion dollars, excess of a billion dollars still sitting there uh, uh, that, uh, that they can access uh, uh, through, uh, through PFD cuts and they want to go after it. They want all this other stuff and they want all the other stuff that they wouldn't have to pay for. They want to go after it. And it's just, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, when you, when you see it that way, when you see what they're doing, it really gets sort of sickening. It really gets sort of, come on guys. I mean, I mean, you, you're being very transparent here. You're going out and you're polling, you're trying to find the thing Alaskans hate most, and then you're going to stick that on the PFD. That's, that's, that's exactly what you're, what you're doing here. And it's, it's just, I mean, it, it, it's redundant. 
it's it it is it is dishonest it is everything that that you know bad that i can say this last week that you'll let me say bad things uh, uh, it, it's it's just it, it, it's just it's just being misleading to the public <laughs> wait the newspaper is being misleading to the public i mean <laughs> I thought after we got rid of Hearst, that was never going to happen again. That was the whole that was the whole point. Um, it's so disingenuous when politicians deflect and ask citizens to give up things like the PFD rather than focusing on their spending issues. I, this is an argument that I've been making for years. I mean, Brad, you know, in this state, do we have a spending problem or do we have a revenue problem? Or, as I'm saying now, do we have a, a revenue problem because we have a spending problem? I mean, that's really what it came down to. It used to always be framed as, oh, well, we've got a revenue problem. I mean, we've got all these other things. We've got to spend this much money. It's always a revenue. And now here we are. Now here we are in a true revenue problem because we just can't control our appetite for spending. We, we, we can't, Michael. I mean, but we proved that in 2019, right? When the, when, when the governor tried to push back on spending and have the deep cuts that would be necessary to achieve, to, to match traditional revenues, to match spending to traditional revenues. When the governor tried to push back and do that, we had the state up in flames. We had, you know, uh, uh, the recall petition that was almost there uh, uh, to recall him. We had legislators uh, turning on him. We had, we could, he couldn't even get 16 in the final analysis to support 16 legislators out of 60 to support his, uh, to support his spending cuts. It just, it, I mean, we, we do have a spending problem, but we, we have a spending problem that people don't want to cure. I love how the Binkleys too are going in about how the government cut, the governor cut, the governor, show me where the governor cut. I mean, really, even with that 2019, they ended up spending, what, I think they cut $80 million out of a $8 billion budget. So, I mean, come on, it's, you know. All right, uh, the uh, the next uh, on our list of, uh, of coal stocking filling ideas is uh, what's left out of the K-12 funding push. What's really, I mean, it's, it, again, they're talking about it. They've been talking about it for 18 months. What's the, uh, what's the next push here? What are they leaving out? Well, there's all sorts of, there's all sorts of press out there. I mean, as we, as we get closer to the legislative session, as people are starting to getting close to winding down for the holiday season and then, you know, moving their offices to Juno and, and restarting uh, in Juno, there's all sorts of push going on for uh, increased K through 12 spending KT, uh, UU, uh, KT, whatever it is, whatever the anchorage rate is. Uh, yeah, you got it. Um, uh, has a headline or had an article that uh, Anchorage School District facing $98 million, $98 million deficit, uh, and that they're restarting, you know, discussion of closing schools or, or eliminating uh, programs or eliminating sports or eliminating all of the things sort of like, sort of like uh, uh, the ADN, right? You know, let's poll what parents appreciate most and let's say we're going to eliminate them <laughs> first um, and get, and get the parents activated. And so, you know, we've got, we've got that uh, from the, uh, from the, the Alaska news source. We've got a, a cliff grow op-ed in the ADN that says what a tour of Anchorage schools taught me. And basically it taught me that we, according to Cliff, it taught me that we need more money sort of everywhere we go. Uh, everything, you know, he looked at every school he looked at uh, uh, needs more, needs more money. And then the, even the Fairbanks news miner has a, has an, a, an op-ed that says the state of our schools and their never ending budget battles talking about, you know, the fair, the, the, the problems that Fairbanks is facing in school funding. Um, and, and Fairbanks closed schools and now that, you know, facing the, the need to close more and, and, and the problems that, uh, that Fairbanks is facing uh, all that way. And then there was an article in the Peninsula Clarion about uh, the legislative delegation down there, the state senator and the two representatives appearing before the, uh, the uh, uh, Peninsula School Board, the Kenai School Board and, and the Peninsula School Board pushing for, uh, for more funding and more uh, 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 the need for uh, additional revenues down there. So it's generally, it's just statewide in all of the major markets. It's, it's, you know, we need more, we need, uh, there's Juno empire articles that do the same thing. We need more, we need more funding. What's being left out of, of almost every one of these articles and every one of these discussions is who people propose to pay 
for this increased spending. It's not like we have surplus money, although the House Coalition claimed that at one point. But it's not like we have surplus money sitting around someplace anymore. We drain savings in in the 20 teens uh, and, and we don't have surplus money around anymore. So now we're talking about now we should be talking about who pays for that additional spending uh, that everybody uh, that everybody want, everyone wants to do. And, and you, you don't find it. You don't find that discussion. You don't find that discussion in the uh, in the 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 television article or the television clip about Anchorage School District phasing $98 million deficit. You don't find that in Cliff Grow's op-ed. Cliff Grow, who claims to be the fiscal expert in the, legisl- the legislature's fiscal expert, you don't find any discussion of who pays uh, in, in his editorial. You don't find that uh, on, the, uh, on the pages of the, of the news miner uh, in their editorial, and you don't find that in the discussion of, of what went on at the school board. There is one place I've been able to find some discussion of that, and it's in a, a, a Peninsula Clarion article uh, about a about a presentation that Justin Ruffridge, uh, one of the one of the Kenai reps, uh, made to the Kenai Chamber of Commerce, and um, Ruffridge said, "So the question is, when there's a request for more funding, where do we think that funding should come from?" He said he sees three, three options available. The state could either make the Alaska Permanent Fund dividends smaller, institute some type of statewide tax, or cut the state budget by about 25%, or try some combination of the three. Um, the article said that Ruffridge asked uh, for opinions. It doesn't say what the opinions were from those, but I can guess uh, when you're asking the State Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is a representative representation of businesses and those in the in the upper income bracket. I can guess what uh, what the answer was. And Ruffridge himself, during his last campaign, highlighted prominently uh, the Alaska Policy Forum uh, uh, analysis that said that we shouldn't do state sales or income taxes. The 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 analysis that left out the PFD didn't analyze, didn't compare impacts of PFD cuts against sales taxes and income taxes just said sales taxes and income taxes are bad. Um, and, and, and so, you know, Ruffridge himself has, has indicated in the last campaign, what he, what he thinks the solution is, but at least he mentioned that there is a question that, that there is a question of who would pay, uh, for these increases, but, but that's the exception to the rule. Otherwise across the board, you're just getting people pushing, Spend, 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 spend more on K through 12, spend more on defined benefits to keep teachers here, uh, to reward teachers, um, uh, spend more on uh, 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 various aspects of, of the educational system. I mean, we've got a, we've got a final report coming from the, uh, the child care uh, task force the governor set up that's going to say subsidies. We, have, we need to have more subsidies for child care providers. We need the state helping to pay for child care providers now. That's coming out of the governor's task force. Um, you, we're going to have all sorts of ideas on spending, but we're not confronting people when they say spend, spend, spend. We're not confronting them with 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 asking, so who do you want to pay for this increased spending? And I think that's the pushback that the press needs to be, that the press needs to be doing, that representatives need to be doing. I will, I will say that I'm, I, I was pleased to see Ruffridge at least raise it. Um, even if he doesn't give the right answer to it. But that's that's the kind of pushback that I think we need to have us as citizens um, and when we're talking about the press or when we're talking to our representatives. That's the kind of pushback we need to have uh, as we go into the session. And, and it's not there right now. You look across the board, all the state's newspapers, television stations, radio stations, it's not there right now. Well, and this goes back to the discussion on who's doing the, you know, who's actually doing reporting or is it just paraphrasing of press releases? I mean, I sent you an article this morning uh, specifically on that first article from from KTUU, which talks about the ninety eight million dollar funding shortfall in the uh, um, in the in the school district for Anchorage. And yet <clears throat> David Boyle points out that in their most recent uh 
in one of their most recent meetings, they pull it all together and they show the actual amount of money that they have on hand and shows that their fund balance is way overfunded because of a COVID loophole, uh, that they are carrying something like 20, 21% of a fund balance, that a huge chunk of that $98 million is in their general fund right now just sitting there because they're being allowed to hold more than they used to and they can legitimately say oh we have a shortfall instead of spending the money that they i mean it's all it's a sh what i'm saying is it's a shell game and no reporter seems to be digging deeper into it to go well wait a second am i taking what you're saying at face value or am i looking at the numbers myself they're all basically just parroting each other at some point or again re-paraphrasing the press release that they got from the the minority the majority the whoever it is that's pushing this they're not really digging into um the actual numbers the facts the stats getting the other side it's it's all become very very one-sided and lazy in that regard Lazy, certainly. Lazy, certainly. And it's backed up. I mean, let's be honest, Michael. It's backed up by editorial boards like the ADN editorial board or backed up by, by publishers like, like runs the ADN editorial board that, that has a result in mind. They want to push, they want to push this burden uh, down to the, to the PFD. They want to push it off on middle and lower income Alaska families. And so the reporting, you know, used to be, well, <laughs> maybe we still have this fiction that that the editorial board is separate from the, 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 the philosophy of the editorial board is separate from the philosophy of the reporters. The reporters there are, are there for facts. I just don't think that's right. I think, I think that the, the publishers are pushing the, 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 the news reporters, news reporters are lazy. News reporters are just reporting whatever, whatever press release they get. Uh, but I think the publishers are, you know, turning, turning a blind eye to that and saying, well, you know, don't delve for any more facts. You've got the facts you need. You've got, you know, this press release gives you the facts you need. Or going and talking to the to the superintendent of the of the Anchorage School District gives you the facts you need. Don't worry about getting. Don't worry about getting any more. Um, and 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 yes, we're so we're having this we're having this landslide of, of reporting on the education system that is one sided, that is biased, that is only reporting the we need more and more and more um, side of the story. And, of course, the answer that you and I have talked about is, uh, you know, some of the recommendations of the Fiscal Policy Working Group where everybody where there comes from a little bit everywhere, comes from a little bit of cuts, comes from a broad based tax, comes from taxing the oil company some more, comes from some, you know, some uh, uh, some capital or some uh, spending caps. It comes from a bunch of different things. But every time this is just what I was saying earlier, it's like there's one answer to every solution and it's the PFD instead of looking at it holistically. They're, they're cracking on it on, I mean, on everything, uh, you know, instead of looking at the whole thing, they just find the one thing and they keep drilling down on it. And I guarantee you, if they had the PFD tomorrow in next year, it'd be, well, we still don't have enough. It, it's just, it's a never ending story. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's Alaska government. Alaska government grows. Alaska government doesn't stay constrained. And when you try to constrain it, like Dunleavy did in in 2019, you got people that push back. I mean, so we've trained, I, I, I get comments every one, once in a while on things I write. And, and one of the comment was, is we've trained Alaskans to think they get everything for free. They get government for free. They get, you know, anything they want, they get for free. And, and, and now that we've, now that we're hitting the point where you can't get everything you want for free, the question is who's going to pay for for you know some of the additional things that you want, um, the answer is well I don't want to pay. I mean I I run the newspaper. I I, I take vacations. I don't want to pay. Let's make somebody else pay. Let's figure out how to make somebody else pay. And 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 the PFD is uniquely PFD cuts is a unique way in the in the world actually, um, as as. Uh, as Matt Berman from ICER once said, it's the most regressive tax ever proposed. It's a unique way in the world to shove the costs off on middle and lower income Alaska, Alaska families. It's a unique way for the top 20% to avoid bearing a, uh, a proportionate share uh, of, of the burden. It's, 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 and so we want everything for free, but now we can't have everything. We can't have it entirely free so let's figure out who pays for for the remainder and and the argument is let's shove it off on somebody that doesn't own the newspapers 
uh, doesn't uh, uh, isn't a publisher of the of the Anchorage Daily News or any of the newspapers. Let's shove it off on somebody else. Yeah. Again, <clears throat> there is a solution on the table here, but nobody wants to take it because it, uh, well, it's a lo- it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, because you'd have to basically look at the whole thing, and you'd have to look at taxes. You'd have to look at cuts. You'd have to look at oil taxes. You'd have to look at all these things. But you and I are both in agreement that that's probably the best um, and most responsible way to do it. Um, and you, but the problem is you get, every one of those things hits a different special interest, right? I mean, you hit the oil taxes and the oil companies go crazy and the chambers go crazy and everything else, even though we all agree that there's still money left on the table there. We talk about cuts, the unions go crazy. The thing, you know, we talk about taxes and the chambers of commerce again, and the Republican, you know, they all go crazy. I mean, everything has got some kind of special interest. And unfortunately the one, you know, the people that keep taking it in the tailpipe are the general public who are like, you just keep taking the PFD. And again, they're trying to make a one size fits all solution for a complex multifaceted problem. Yeah, exactly right, Michael. I mean, that I wrote a column once that said, we all know what this, we all know what the solution is. Why aren't we doing it? And the solution is what Dunleavy said in his, what the administration said in their FY 21 10 year plan uh, which is what they call the balanced approach. Everybody gives a little. Um, everybody absorbs some of the costs, so everybody, you know, is involved in the balance between what we spend and what we cut. Uh, everybody has a little bit of the pain, so everybody is sort of sort of pushing back the balanced approach that Dunleavy that the Dunleavy administration talked about in the FY 21 10 year plan. The comprehensive approach, different title, but sort of the same thing comprehensive approach that came out of the fiscal policy working group. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Nobody pays the whole thing. Uh, Nobody bears the whole burden. Everybody sort of shoulders in on part of it. And as a consequence of that, everybody starts looking at the reasonableness of the spending because everybody's having to bear a share of the costs and everybody's starting to to push back on increase in spent increased spending because everybody's having to, you know, face uh, face, you know, paying out some some share of the cost. Dunleavy even talked about that again last session uh, when he talked briefly about sales taxes um, and said, you know, what you want, what he said was what you want is, is where no one, no one group takes, takes an undue burden. Everybody shares a little bit. You don't try to pile it on uh, any one group. Everybody contributes to the solution. And as a consequence, everybody sort of pushes back on, uh, on increased spending. I th- everybody sees that as the right solution. Everybody understands that would that's the that's that's what the economists tell us, and and that's what you know the 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 the, the analysts tell us is the right solution for the overall economy. It's the right solution for Alaska families. Everybody bears a little bit of the burden, and everybody uh, starts pushing back. But that's not what happens when you get to the legislative session. There, in the legislative session, it's winner take all. It's who has the most raw political power to force their will on everybody else. And, and I win everything and, and I win everything. And they in that context, it's the it's the Binkley's. It's the, it's the, as you say, the unions, it's the oil companies. Everybody who says, I don't want to pay for any of it. And and the and the and the the, the group with the least political power at the legislature. Turns out to be middle and lower income Alaska families. Turns out to be 80% of Alaska families. The top 20% in the trade groups all are able to protect their interests once you get down to Juneau. It's the 80% of Alaska families who aren't able to protect their interests. Right. Uh, and everybody sort of piles on and says, let's just dump it on them. Yeah. And we get the immediate pain of the lower 20%, but we get the long term pain from the 40 to 80 percentile in the middle who are the ones that would generally speaking you know do entrepreneurship create jobs do investing you know some of those other things with that money and so it's like it's the gift that keeps on giving because you're damaging the overall economy and that's part of that problem with that public private disconnect that we talked about uh with rob uh, with rob myers is that we end up with that i mean it's the same kind of thing it 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 just keeps it's a self-reinforcing feedback loop of negative uh, outcomes. It is. Yeah. And 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 it's it's a self-reinforcing impact of negative outcomes, but it's a self-reinforcing impact of the 
of, of the upper income brackets and the oil companies always win. I mean, they always get the, in, in the unions. They always win. They always get what they want out of the legislature. And it comes at the expense of 80 percent of Alaska families. And you're exactly right. Of, of that 80 percent, 60 percent of it is middle income Alaska families. A lot of people focus on the bottom 20 percent and think we're arguing about the bottom. We're not. I mean, it's the 60 percent in the middle. Uh, that that are that are taking the hit. They're paying more through PFD cuts than through any other revenue measure. Brad, final uh, one of the weekly top three. Let's uh, let's let's dive into it here. So you've been foreshadowing it uh, uh, through the show. Nice, nice, subtle uh, mentions along the way. Um, that's, that's why they pay me the big bucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Alaska Public Media, uh, uh, the, their website has reprinted an article from NPR. It's not one that that the APRN, that the Alaska media themselves has written because uh, they're too focused on you know cutting the PFD. It's, it's one from NPR. And it talks about, it's a lengthy article, but an excellent article. And the study it reports on is an excellent study. I've started digging into it. Uh, the headline is Key Findings Released in Kenya Universal Basic Income. Uh, experiment. And the discussion is about uh, an experiment that's been going on in Kenya of, uh, of, of funding a universal basic income for in certain villages uh, in Kenya to see what impact uh, that has. And they have villages, they have, it's a whole, you know, set up as a scientific experiment. They have villages that are being funded. They have similar villages with similar demographics, with similar economics that are not being funded. And they're comparing the, the, the impact between the two. They're trying to establish, they're trying to, you know, look at whether the additional money that's going into the villages that are being funded is being wasted or being, uh, are being used for, uh, or how it's being used and what the impact is on those villages. And the, uh, the, the, the outcome of it is very interesting, I think, uh, from the standpoint of the PFD. It says, uh, down in the article, it says, and the, and the report goes into this more deeply, it says the big news came from a different measure. And basically, it's a measure, it's a, basically, it's, a, it's an outcome that they really hadn't anticipated much. They measured for it, but they didn't, didn't really anticipate it. People's quote, people's likelihood of starting a business. And in those villages that got funded, evidently there was more economic activity, not only in terms of consumption, uh, uh, which is something that's been noted about the PFD in Alaska, but in terms of taking the money uh, that they were that they were being given. And it wasn't, it wasn't all that much, but taking the money they were giving given. And start and investing it in starting new businesses. Um, it talks a little bit about how they about one of the big drivers of that. They pooled the money, the villagers pooled the money, and then gave loans sort of in sequence to uh, various uh, other of the villagers. Uh, sort of started a bank, uh, if you will, uh, village banks out of uh, uh, or credit unions out of out of out of the money they got. But the amount of business activity increased business activity, increased small businesses that got generated out of the PF, uh, generated out of the UBI payments uh, was something that they, something that sort of was a, 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 not a new learning that came out of the study, the significance of it, the size of it, the, the, the activity of it uh, was something that, uh, that was, that was certainly new learning and certainly that stood out. Uh, in the course of the uh, in the course of the experiment, I I see that I see that personally with the PFD. I've got I'm, I'm a, an investor in a small business in Alaska, and that small business got started when the person that owns it took their PFDs, uh, sort of bundled them over a couple of years, and started a small business, uh, and and started the business you know on eBay and started it uh, through Facebook Marketplace or whatever it was. And gradually that business has been building up and I you know, saw an opportunity to invest in it uh, and, and help it help it grow. But the core of it was was through the investment of of their PFDs and what the Kenya. And, and so that's my, you know, uh, uh, episodic evidence of, of or experience with how it, with how it occurs here. But the systematic study of it over in the Kenya study says that that sort of thing. Not only not only 
occurs in small parts. It occurs in big parts and builds into builds into the major investments that are going on, major investments for those sized villages, major investments that are going on in those, those villages. Another part of the study said, ah, they didn't waste it. Uh, the money wasn't wasted on, uh, uh, on, on booze and drugs and, and everything else. There was <laughs> some small expenditures on that, but by and large, they were outweighed by a, a little bit of increased consumption in terms of improved diet and in terms of improved personal mobility. Uh, they bought motor, motor scooters or something out, out of it. Some investment in their existing businesses, uh, which is primarily agricultural, and some investment, new equipment, new seeds, new ways of, of going on uh, going going on about that business. But the but the biggest bump, the most unexpected bump, was the starting of these of these new uh, new and additional small businesses. Well, yeah, well, and the biggest thing out of that was that they said that the big news is is that the recipients of this money. Uh, who received it in a lump sum instead of a monthly payment and used it for that investment, that their net revenues from their businesses was 80% higher than what the UBI could have given them because they used the money, they invested it, and they created new wealth, which is what we're talking about with the PFT. A lot of people, sure, people buy big screen TVs or they go to Hawaii, but a lot of people use it to invest in their businesses or create a business, and the overall long-term net revenue 80%. I mean, it's a huge number. Yeah, it's 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 something that I'm not sure we've ever studied for uh, in Alaska. I haven't uh, uh, gone back to ask uh, uh, Scott or Gunner if it's if it's an issue that they studied for back in the old days, but it's not an issue I've seen the the new generation of ISA researchers uh, uh, study for in Alaska. But I know from my, as I say, I know from my own experience, it's going on uh, there. So it's it's. Um, it's something that that helps. I mean, we know we we have studied. ICER has studied, and this is where we get the biggest adverse economic impact finding. We know that that PFDs are spent on on goods, not not wasted largely from much at all from ex existing studies, but are spent on increased consumption. We know that, and we know that increased consumption stimulates economic activity in Alaska. You, we know that it's spent on small businesses. We know that it's spent on increased food. We know it's spent on gasoline. We know it's spent on things that, that increase economic activity uh, in Alaska. What we, what we haven't really focused on is whether it's doing something else, which is increasing businesses themselves, increasing the, the investment side, increasing the, 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 the productivity side, um, increasing the offering of services, goods and services side. Uh, but the Kenya study uh, indicates that that goes on as well when you when you have these sorts of these sorts of programs. So it's a I think it's an important step in understanding the PFD and understanding what the PFD brings uh, is bringing to Alaska and bringing to uh, uh, bringing to the to Alaska economic activity. I mean that's the just that's the justification that people give for for no income taxes, right? Because the argument is the wealthy will take that increment, those incremental dollars that otherwise would go in income taxes, will take those incremental dollars and invest them and produce economic activity from investing them. Well, what the Kenya study is saying is that's not only true of the top of the, of the upper income brackets, it's true also of lower income brackets. It's true also of people who don't earn enough yet or don't receive enough income yet in order to make those investments. If you give them the opportunity of a, some additional income, that's what they will do with it. They will invest it right. uh, and create additional economic activity. Well, so and those, it, median, those median income companies, I mean, those are the smaller companies. The lar you know, you assume that in the higher incomes, it's the bigger companies, which employ fewer people versus the medians, which is the mom and pops, which in, I mean, that's like 75, 80% of the overall workforce in America is these small sole proprietorships or mom and pop businesses. So, I mean, you, again, the disconnect is what's killing me. Less than 60 seconds here, Brad. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a big study. I think those who are interested in the issue certainly should read the article and then start digging into the study and, and understanding its implications for Alaska. Surprisingly, at least an Alaska uh, news outlet ran the article, ran the NPR article, but there isn't, they didn't add any Alaska analysis to it. That's, that's something that I think we need to start talking about. The numbers on this, Brad, were startling. 
And, uh, you know, as know as, as many people just cringe whenever they start talking about the PFD being a perfect model for UBI, um, you know, the, the problem is, is that this shows exactly what part of the issue is, that they are gutting that middle class, which would be the biggest ones that have would have some excess money to be able to to uh, to perform and participate in entrepreneurship and therefore create. I mean, 80 percent they were getting. Oh, you're only getting 50 bucks a month. But all of a sudden, because they have their businesses, they had an 80 percent increase in that money. Uh, instead of just the money that was coming in, they used it for something, and now they're generating 80% more revenue than what they were getting on the UBI because they were able to invest it. I mean, it's it's astonishing. Yeah, it shows that it shows that the 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 problem, the issue faced by middle income families isn't necessarily uh lack of creativity. It's not that the that the upper incomes are more creative or you know know better how to manage their money. It's the lack of financial capital. I mean, these are people who couldn't go out and borrow additional money, right? They don't have, they don't own their homes. They don't have the, 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 the ability to establish credit and, and get borrow from banks. So this essentially created that sort of capital formation, the opportunity for capital formation. And when they bundled their capital by bundling their capital together, uh, they were able to really, you know, generate a, a significant amount of investment opportunity, investment capital that was available out there. And, and then with that capital availability, it unleashed the creativity of, of those in those, you know, who were able to access that capital, those in the villages. And they had, they had substantial creativity. They created new businesses. They created expanded businesses. They created, you know, they went out <laughs> went out and bought cars and, you know, could, could have a Uber service over there. They could have a car service over there. It, the, the, the creativity was there. What was, what was lacking was the, was the, was the access to capital and, and giving them the access to capital, uh, uh unbundled the, or un unlocked the, uh, the creativity. So it, it's the same, it's the same argument. It's the same argument we have by the upper income. Oh, we need the additional money because we'll invest it wisely and we'll we'll build we'll build bigger businesses or we'll we know better than you. Bank. Yeah, we know better than you. Yeah, exactly. And this and this said, wait a second, no, <laughs> we these people know how to do it too. Uh, let's stop, you know let's give them the opportunity to do that in Alaska. We have we we don't have to create UBI. We don't have to take from one income group and give it to another to do it. We have you know free money from from the the state's royalty wealth and and the question is do we do we share it equally and give everybody the opportunity to build from that or essentially by using pfd cuts to fund government as opposed to tax to taxes do we do we do we push that free money into the hands of of the upper income bracket and the kenya study is telling us there is wealth there is there is opportunity uh to be created by making sure that it gets in the hands of all income brackets as opposed to pushing it in the hands of one income bracket brian just said nice tie in to christmas remember who jimmy stewart worked for and it's a wonderful life well jimmy stewart worked for him i just happened to watch this uh the jimmy stewart worked for himself that was the Bailey Savings and Loan, right? I mean, it was for all the community. He was giving loans to small people who had a house who were working in the community and were able to pay it back. And somebody else wanted to take all the money. Mr. Potter wanted to take all the money and use it for himself and put them all in slums and increase his own thing instead of putting it back in the hands of the people. And that, uh, you know, instead of putting it and allowing them to make their choices for their homes or their businesses and everything else, which is exactly what we've got going on right here. I mean, it's it, there's your Christmas top one there, Brad, is the, the 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 similarities between It's a Wonderful Life and what we're facing here in the state of Alaska. It's the potters of the world that are holding us, uh, that are kind of holding us too, because they know better than we, that we should just live in our slums or live with what we have and be happy with it and let them do it all. That's the, that's the whole thing right there. There you go. The, the, it's a wonderful life. The Alaska, the subtitle is the Alaska PFT story. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's astonishing, but that shows you in, in just a, a microcosm of what would happen if we went back to the full, 
PFD, uh, what could happen? We'd have a, we'd have a boom. I, and I think the economy would definitely, the, the, the private economy would definitely respond to that in a big way. Yeah, I, I I think so also, Michael. I mean, the press loves to go out and the 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 Binkley led press anymore loves to go out and do these stories of oh Johnny, you know, we we gave money to it and they spent it on alcohol, or we gave money to him and they spent it on drugs. I mean, they love to do those those stories, but we don't see stories of they took the money, they took their share of the state's resource wealth, and they built it into a small business that that now employs you know four or five people or or six or seven, and they're continuing to invest, invest in that in that small business. We we don't have we don't have stories like that, and they and I know they exist. And now the Kenya the Kenya study is telling us they exist on a larger scale. They likely exist on a larger scale uh, than what we than what we've anticipated before. So it's um, you know, we, <laughs> to, we'll 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 begin the day with the press, and we'll end the day with the press. It's a matter of what the press puts emphasis on, right? It's a matter right. of, of the stories they try to find. And when you've got press that, that's trying to, you know, drive everything's the PFD's fault, then they're going to find the negative stories. There are positive yeah. stories out there. Well, when they become, when, again, when they become lazy and they stop looking into it and they take everything at face value and just parrot it, that's a problem. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Next week, buddy. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Thanks so much for coming on board. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, and keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the weekly top three.